was the original old building and then the next building along which we'll go to shortly which we converted to our trophy and dining room was built the year before this, 1897. So this archway would have been for old ox wagons. So they would have pushed an ox wagon in here to store it. Yeah, the main fireplace, that was all just from stone collected on the property here. Well, Phil, Jess, it's so wonderful to have you guys back. The safari was planned immediately after your previous trip. And uh, I know it's been a long time waiting, counting those days down, but to be uh, opening afternoon of your safari, we thought we saw some buffalo bulls coming out the thicket feeding here. So we stalked them just to have a place stalk and start getting a feeling for what it's like. And yeah, always fun to get up close. And now at least you're getting a good idea of what we're looking at. And we've seen multiple soft bulls on the first day. Yes, yeah, so, yeah, it's going to be a wonderful week. Primarily bow hunting, maple rifle out for a couple of things. But yeah, really good to have you guys back. And so exciting to be early in the season. I mean, we've just come off our usual annual US marketing trip and come straight back into hunting. It's wonderful. So it's going to be a, an awesome adventure again. First morning out is so beautiful. It's nice and calm still, and we've got a nice, exciting list ahead of us. You know, there's a buffer on the list for you, Phil. There's here eland. We've already been glassing over some kudu. We did see a nice eland bull over here, an old bull across the canyon, but not quite what we're after so soon in the safari. But yeah, I think it's going to be a really exciting week ahead and a lot on the cards for us. So. We've just seen that herd of buffalo over here. Um, they're coming out the canyon, but I think they're going to bed up on the edge of the thick stuff. So, I'm going to take a walk over. The wind is perfect, it's blowing up into our faces here. Just in this first big trees, there are cows and calves. Yeah, quite a lot of them. Yeah, as I bought at the back, yeah. <laughs> the cows are so jumpy, that old cow on the right. Took one look at us and just gone. Back up. Yeah. He's got a tank of a body in him, that bull. That one on the far left has a huge body.
right where we're standing here, right here, I've just seen a buffalo track here. So it could be it's quite a prominent game trail we're walking on here. Maybe it walked along here. Um, we're going to check in here. If we can't see it here, we'll walk straight over this hill. There's another deep canyon on the side. Maybe that bull's heading that way. See that what we call an aloe tree, it looks like a kind of cactus. It's sticking up there, the spiky leaves. That's at 40 yards, and that buffalo walked just in the left there. And we just saw all those trees shaking, and he hasn't come out. Don't move, no one move. Do not move, no one move. To see maybe he feeds back more toward our right to this thicket to our right. Just just out of bow range when he stepped out, between 50 and 60 yards, and he walked and he was in the complete clear at 60 yards. And he's kept feeding across us, and when he crossed there, he was at 70, and he's still going. So wind swirling a bit. We're gonna try a bit of a gamble here. Yeah. As I came round this corner, you were standing here at 15 yards. <laughs> mm, so close. There's quite a lot of buffalo tracks coming down this dry creek. Obviously all these stones and that, it's going to be very noisy walking down here, but this creek heads straight to the pond. So with this heat, that's obviously where these tracks are going, but let's just keep looping around. There's definitely a buffalo lying in the water, I can see it, but it's, it's not looking here, but it is facing this way. So we've just got to cut one more line of trees back, come around that um, set there, and we'll be able to have a good look at him. So Phil, it's late afternoon, bulls are all up moving, um, we spotted some bulls bedded down the end there. The bigger old bull we after is actually facing this way and feeding this way, so I think we're going to move up to those trees there, try to spot them there. I 
can see those two old bulls together here. 150 in front of us. One standing smashing a tree like this. The other one's eating. So we're just going to keep inching forward. There are a lot of scattered trees ahead of us. We use these trees to our advantage. afternoon didn't work out we started in this canyon behind us and we really were banking on them well I was banking on them staying there and maybe going back down the canyon for water and they turned actually and fed straight up into the complete open up here and continually at 90 yards in front of us as much as we crouched and try to use the sun didn't work out so yeah but um, each day we're getting closer and closer and tomorrow is another another crack at it and yeah, we've seen good numbers and decent bulls, so I'm very, very pleased with it so far. Well, Phil, this morning, the first two hours, uh, it's really closed in with fog. We couldn't see more than maybe 80 yards, so we've been waiting for it to lift. Predictably, we knew when it lifted, it would start cooking, and it is really cooking now. It's about 30 degrees Celsius, but we've just seen an old bull coming down here behind us. There is a pond there on the edge of this deep canyon, so we're just going to, um, the wind's perfect from here to just keep putting our nose there and getting straight toward him. So we're going to head there now and just see what he looks like. and. It's an ideal situation to have a bull by himself. We've done multiple stalks now in groups and that, and our most successful stalk we've been within shooting range has been with like one or two bulls. So this is a good opportunity for us. Let's give it a go. The wind's also different here than it was up there. We'll have to see, because of this canyon, we'll have to see where the wind actually is, what the wind's actually doing, but we might have to come in from the right into those thickets. So from where we are right now, that ball's 350 yards. So we've got a lot of cover here to work with at least. So we're just gonna keep as we are. And as we get closer, we'll keep checking the wind just to make sure it's not kind of turning toward him. But then we'll make a new plan when we're close. This whole tree's just been taken to town. It's been smashed up. I mean, he has a whole branch lying over here. Um, I mean, all of this is just, part of the old bulls. That's why you'll see often like bark and stuff in their bosses, but this is obviously a core territory. I mean, there's a lot of dung around here and trees smashed up, so. Oh, he's still standing in the shade there. You can see a cactus. He's just over the cactus. He's now 80 yards from us.
in on in the crease. That shot, oh, that's perfect. Bro, your penetration was brilliant. The penetration was so good. You hit that shoulder bone, but the penetration was deep. I had just left where I wanted to go. Bro, the blood was coming out immediately. Well done. Well done. Well done, brother. all the practice paid off in that one moment my brother you hard shot that buffalo bull done yeah and the penetration was good at first i was like oh it's a bit forward but that arrow and i look at the length of the arrow it sunk more than halfway in and immediately within 10 yards i saw red blood coming out that hole What an old warrior. One shot kill with a bow, my brother. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you so much. <laughs> what a moment. What a moment to hunt one properly like we hunted. Not many people do that, my man. And what a beautiful bull, an ancient bull. My goodness, his bosses are shining smooth here from more than a decade of running. Look at that. <laughs> What an awesome animal. What a moment to be sitting in front of him. Come check it out, Phil. Check it out. That is just extreme age, just rub those bosses shiny like that. This evening, um, I think for, for, for all of us, I think what you've achieved in the last four days and your effort, but not just that, I think talking about it for two, three years and going through that and visiting us at DSC or at SCI at Houston, you've, it feels like you're part of the show crew because you've come to every show and we really appreciate both yourself and Jessica. But I think talking to Sticks and everything culminating into days of effort and numerous failed stalks and attempts at close quarters experiences. I think getting that Cape Buffalo with the bows is, is, is something really wonderful. I think it's something we all look up to. Uh, you, you didn't sit in the blind. You, you decided you wanted to do one on foot. And I tell you, I, I wrote you a message. I said, man, respect and goosebumps. It's wonderful. It Sticks relayed the message to me and it's just wonderful. So to both yourself, to Sticks, to Jessica, and to Sean, our cameraman, for sticking it out and being there. Cheers, and a little something from us, part of the Dagger Boy Club. This, my mate, this is the serious Dagger Boy Club. Welcome to it. And I tell you, not many have got the one with the bow. So welcome to the club, you deserve it. Yes, sir. And cherish it, enjoy it, and many more to come. I'm sure it won't be your last cap after. No, absolutely <laughs> not. You know, I, it's 100% an, uh, an unforgettable experience. Um, 
I, I, I promise you, I'll never forget the way the buffalo looked at me. He, he, he jumped up, and by that time, I was already drawn. And really, I can't thank Sticks enough. He worked his tail end off for everything. I mean, all of the failed attempts, all the way through the successful. But at the same time, Ed and Rusty both had, at some point, had a part in it, whether it be spotting or you know helping out one way or the other. And I, I really appreciate it. So, thanks for everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Cheers, yeah, mate. It's a beautiful, calm morning for a walk. It rained heavy last night, a massive thunderstorm. The ground is wet, but nice and soft, so we're just going to take a slow walk down into the brush here. There's a long stretch of brush here. We've seen a lot of game around here, so we're just going to see what presents itself. There's a lot of wildebeest, there's some eland, there's a lot of camps back. You'll see war dogs here, yeah, a lot of bees, so we're just going to take a slow walk and see what we can find. Yes, classic, classic bow hunting where we just out of range a couple times. Uh, we had those zebra come really close to us, walked out around us, and they were at like 65. Caught our wind left, and then we had gems back. We were continually getting kind of 80 yards, and I mean, that's yeah, with a herd of gems, but they were unbelievable eyesight, and we just could never close closer. And they were kind of the edge of these plains, and we ran out of brush each time and ran out of cover. So. We'll let things settle down here now and go look for something else. But it's classic bow hunting. Um, it's still fun to get close. I mean, you'd never normally um, get to watch and observe the zebra and things so close. Uh, still fun to see them. So, Jess, those mountain reed buck we saw from across the valley were kind of straight up here. From up top, it looked like there was kind of a line of trees we could follow. Wind's good here for us as well. But As we come around this bush in front of us, we should be able to see them laying there. Okay, on the shoulder. Ah, oh, too low. It's okay. But left, right was good, but we shot just under him. Good effort. Let's go get your arrow. fell just short. <laughs> see, the arrow hit here, and the ram was better here. You can actually see his hoof prints where he jumped. So he was standing here, and your arrow landed right here. So from the arc, probably, I think, it's the only problem with technology, I think your rangefinder probably picked this up. You know what I mean? Picked up this whole cluster of grass here. But good effort. <laughs> We did well to even get that close. Well done. We shall continue on. Party there, 
there he's coming across the gap. You see him? Tan color, heck of a nice ball. Uh, as he stepped out, it's the first time I've seen his dewlap, a massive dewlap. I could see from the top he had a nice brush, but. But yeah, good day nonetheless. We really covered a lot of ground and seen a lot of game. A bit of everything. A bit of stalking, a bit of blind sitting, a bit of glassing. So we'll keep at it tomorrow. We'll get on top of it. <laughs> well, Jess, well, we've changed areas. We drove just over three hours away from the base camp. We are right on the edge of the tribal homelands in Eastern Cape. We are against the, the Great Kai River. Beautiful area to come in. First morning, have such magnificent weather and just the scenes and what we've seen already has been breathtaking. The area is known for exceptional kudu, so that's on the radar. And then um, guys have been hearing reports already good eland, amongst other things. So we obviously try whatever opportunity we can with the bow. But being such exceptional kudu area, we'll revert to rifle for the right bull that comes, our, comes across our path. So yeah, we'll keep glassing hard. You can see it is quite thick stuff, but there is some really nice topography, some high points behind us and that. And yeah, I'm sure that we will get really stuck into it and start seeing some really good animals. So I'm really excited. It's a really nice change. And it looks totally different between rails we've ever hunted together. So I think it's going to be a wonderful couple of days yet together. Walking along here, yeah, and he saw a zebra drinking down here, yeah, and a turn was walking up. So um, it is kind of heading towards the road, and we want to just see where it crossed the road. But a lot of thick cover here by itself looks quite relaxed. Maybe we can get onto it. So let's keep looking for him. some gut on the flesh but he was quartering so the shot to me looked like in the right zone so we're just gonna give it some time and we'll follow up but we definitely heard crashing in the trees below us so give it a bit of time and we're gonna follow up but you had a clean pass through entirely and I was yeah you see his track and look on the stones yeah there's blood spray everywhere yeah. we're just gonna keep on the track that crashing sound we heard soon after the shot, that zebra rolled over here and it's crashed a tunnel through here. I can actually literally see flattened grass, so we're getting warmer, Jesse. We're in good shape here. Let's keep following this track. <laughs> Watch your step here. <laughs> that was the crashing we heard. We heard crashing soon after the shot while we were still talking. Well Jesse, as that stallion ran away, I said to you, aim on the sergeant stripe. Yeah, I said, you come up the front leg and you see the triangular stripe, you hit it there and that's exactly what you did. And as it ran away, I thought, I swear I saw a mark there and I was like, ah, oh, you hit him perfect. And what an ancient stallion. I tell you, long past I've seen a stallion that's just beaten up. 
So you took an old warrior out, I tell you what. Well done, well done. Excellent shot. Magnificent old ancient zebra stallion. We are on the last edge of the hunting area before tribal homeland starts. So you can see across the canyon um, the villages that side and then that's all Transkai tribal homeland. It's really really beautiful. You look and see these deep gorges, you've got the great Kai River flowing below us here and um, yeah just a, a great um, area to be hunting, just the vistas you know now you can see we're, we, our hunting area extends right to the edge of the Kai River and then across the other side uh, is tribal homeland so it's probably the furthest east you can kind of hunt inside the Eastern Cape. So we're right on the furthest east um, and then it breaks into Transkite uh, territory and then minimal hunting from there on. So yeah, it's just a very, very uh, pretty area and just beautiful to see uh, the deep canyons here and the Kai River flowing below us. So, we said from the beginning, if we see something exceptional, we'll pull a rifle out. It's been years since I've seen something so exceptional. We need a lot of things to line up, but there is a kudubu of absolute monumental proportions down there. A wide bull, perfectly symmetrical, huge. I only want to venture to guess, but and the, one of the biggest I've seen in the flesh. So, fortunately, we're in such a good position here already. We came over here to glass this morning. We caught a glimpse of a bull here. Thought he looked big, but he was in the trees. And now he's standing in the open feeding. And I can see him. Old bull. Oh, and I can see him. his whole um, abdomen here is like a huge, like almost an abscess there. Um, he's obviously been in a big fight at some point or something. Got a huge abscess hanging here. It's a bit down in condition, but magnificent big horns. I can see the whole secondary growth down to the horn base. Mm. Um, it's just a tremendous, tremendous animal. So um, I've already looked. We've got a lot of thick cover here. We're going to work this cover all the way around. And it looks to me we can get to about 300 yards from the spool. So uh, let's get after it. We've got light left so we're going to just work down here and get ourselves into a good position. A lot going on here. There's good cars at 200 yards straight across the valley here. Sanyala Bulia that saw me. It's looking at me down here at about 250. zoom down, pick a bush, pick a rock, pick a very small spot. There he's, his horns facing us straight now. There he just picked his head up. That's the correct bull. Pick his head up. Okay, on the shoulder. Okay, wait, he's taking a step. Okay, full in the crease of that shoulder, he's quartering away. In the crease. Perfect. Down. My man. I 
can see the horns, you can see no movement. <laughs> he says the greatest kudu your life, the greatest kudu of mine too. <laughs> oh my goodness. It's a big scoot in my life, dude. That's crazy. That's absolutely nuts. I've never seen something like this in the flesh. <sighs> Look at that. <laughs> oh my good gracious, Phil. I'm a tall guy. This is truly memorable, it's truly spectacular, it's truly something unexpected. Absolutely. And to come to such a wild area, such a rough area, and pull this out the bag, I mean, we did this totally on our own. Spotted myself, returned to the area alone, found him, tracked him, made a perfect shot. That bull barely went. I mean, 10 yards off the shot, he collapsed and caught up and I knew it was over. So full, full of a lifetime, my friend. Yes, sir. Thank you. There's some eland balls feeding in front of us. Been trying to catch up to them, they've just been walking in front of us the whole time feeding. Paul's gonna come in this gap. Get ready to draw, he's gonna be at 40 yards in the gap here. Yeah. Get ready to draw. Not that ball, the one in the front here. Yeah. Draw, draw. Oh, shucks. Ready to hold your draw. You're gonna come in the gap, okay? Can you hold it? Holding Jesse. Okay. And draw. Fifty five yards. And the bull we wanted was not clear when they stood. We got really close, some water dogs bust out, but there's Elon settling sort of moving in front of us. And that bull that we wanted stopped straight up here at full draw. That's just bad luck. Well, look, we're right here at the, right down at the coast, like all along this river here. We're off to Zebra and maybe Impala. So it's beautiful morning. It's getting hot very quickly, so it's going to be an awesome day. The Zebra just went down into this thick stuff now, so hopefully they go down and we can follow them there.
This is your virtual zebra or plain zebra, what they call. So they've got the shadow stripes in between, in between the black, the black stripes. And this is a beautiful old mare. This. Thank Good you. shooting, eh? Thank you. Dude, they are so cool. They're just so cool. Well, Jesse, we left Luke and Phil together to go uh, looking for a zebra for Luke. Um, yeah, we carried on, on our own and we really worked well on the edge of all these like forests here and we found a beautiful big old cow and her teeth are worn right down and I mean that shot is absolutely perfect. As you let that arrow fly, I, could, I just saw the flesh just sink through the shoulder said that's it, perfect, perfect, perfect. It didn't even go maybe, it was 50 yards straight to here, rolled over, it's all done in a matter of, of minutes. So. Well done, great shot, and just a beautiful animal. I've always said to you guys that Nyala is my personal favorite animal, and, and it's really going to look beautiful to take uh, have that bull and an old cow with him. Uh, the mount's going to be spectacular, and yeah, we chose a lovely old cow today. So, um, well done, and uh, on to the next now. First wait, he hasn't come yet. That's him at the back on the left, you see him? Good job. Good job, Jesse. It's not him. I'll hit him again as soon as he comes out. That's it done, Jesse. What a long day out. But we got a magnificent, magnificent giraffe. A lot bigger up in person, eh, Jesse? Mm -hmm. I mean, the skull's like two and a half feet. What a magnificent, magnificent giraffe. Now, just prehistoric, almost dinosaur like. What a magnificent bull, just old, thick neck, dark coat, huge, huge forehead bone, yeah. So remember, I was telling you about this big bone, this like, almost growth they get, yeah. This is definitely about a 25 year old bull giving this body size, thickness of neck and stuff. So, just, yeah, this is a magnificent animal and a magnificent giraffe bull. Good job, Jesse.